Sinai Peninsula on the hinge of Africa and Asia is its own government distinct from the rest of Egypt. Bedouin tribes who adapted to this harsh and rugged territory know how to care for each other with teamwork and exceptional hospitality. On the west side of Sinai is an obscure but fascinating location called Sarabit El Khadim. It is connected with the invention and origin of the alphabet. According to Lena Ekenstein, dig administrator to Sir Flinders Petrie, who researched Sinai in 1905, it also is a contender for Mount Sinai and the giving of the Mosaic Tablets of the Law. Getting access requires knowledgeable local Bedouin guides, and it's a pure delight to work together, experiencing the rhythm of their daily lives. The delicious food is simple yet tasty, reminding of the ancient ways gone by. On the morning of our hike to the temple at Sarabit, it poured rain, so we ate our breakfast, experiencing the first downpour of the year. We hastened to Mount Gurabi, or Horeb. The mountain immediately transformed into a wall of multiple waterfalls within minutes. The water flows into the nearby permanent well at Bir Nazb. With the rain diminishing, we proceeded to hike to the temple at Sarabit from the east side. It's not the usual route to arrive, but Osman and Barakat knew the way along the unmarked trail. High on a mountaintop, Sarabit does not disappoint. Dating as early to the 19th century BCE, it is a Canaanite shrine, indeed the only temple in all of Sinai. Dedicated to the goddess of Hathor, mistress of turquoise, the ancient pharaohs conducted expeditions to mine the valuable stone. Standing stones or stelae etched with hieroglyphs bear witness to the different expeditions launched by many pharaohs. As a member of Pharaoh's household, the prophet Moses most probably knew about this site. Hathor's animal form was a cow and may well have influenced the idolatry of the Israelites during their wanderings out of Egypt. Two caves are located at the east end of the temple complex. The earliest one from the Middle Kingdom is dedicated to Hathor, while the second from the New Kingdom is dedicated to the sky god Sopdu. Here in Hathor's cave, a bust of Queen Ti of the 18th dynasty was discovered. At the back of each cave is a niche. This second cave of the sky god Sopdu is a much better example. Sir Flinders and Hilda Petrie investigated Sarabit and made a landmark discovery. Hilda found a sphinx with both hieroglyphs and a new set of symbols, proto-synatic. Sir Alan Gardner unlocked this incredible puzzle. These Canaanites needed to depart from the complexity of a thousand hieroglyph pictograms. By simplifying the writing to 30 symbols and the sound each represents, this innovation affected us even until today. Serebi Temple was Canaanite and not Egyptian. It is a high place on a mountain. Incense tables and purification vessels abound, as well as Canaanite stone circles. Egyptians did not practice these customs, especially not offering sacrifices as depicted here. Two turquoise mines nearby bear the same number of proto-synatic inscriptions, the content of which tend to be dedications to the goddess or records of personages who conducted the mining operations. Descending into the modern access to Sarabit from Rod El Ayer, the ancients also carved reliefs of boats, hieroglyphs, and even a giraffe. My next goal was to hike along pharaonic era footprints to see the proto-synatic inscription of Hobab, the brother-in-law of Moses. Down below us is the ancient pharaonic copper slag heap and also the well of Bir Nasb.
According to William Shea, for example, the inscription is dedicated to Hobab, the congregation, and the mighty one between the cherubim. As we descend to the well at Bir Nasp, I can see above where we were before at the Hobab inscription. Rabia, our guide, says that this one well supplies around 10 major districts throughout the year. The Hobab inscription, pharaonic reliefs, an ancient foundry, and the Hathor calf goddess makes me truly consider if the children of Israel used these facilities to make the tabernacle so long ago.